Hello, all praise to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, um, not many people are watching my videos, and I don't know why that is. I mean, it's one of a couple of reasons. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'm sort of, I don't know what else to say, I guess. Like, uh, I'm still doing my own reading and my own research and things, but um, there's this thing that happens on the internet where, like I've noticed, I think it's happening now, where... You have a conversation going on, and then at a certain point, people who weren't there at the beginning of the conversation come in, and they go back to a previous previous point that was already covered. So what seems to happen in internet conversations is it's a cycle. If you stay in a conversation long enough, it just goes round in circles. The new person comes in, and they bring up a point that you already answered in the past, and then, yeah, it's... So that's what I... I've been wary, like I've been aware that that's what happens on the internet, and and so therefore I didn't I didn't want to make too many videos. And if you've watched a few of my videos, you've seen at various points in the past I've said like this is it, I'm done. And then God's wanted me to do more, and I don't know, He may still want me to do more. I don't know, but um, just in case this is the end, as far as like I, I don't know, but just in case, I just there's a few things I wanted to clear up. I have mentioned them before. This is a little bit of an overview like a, a rehash on some things, but it's just some points that I wanted to to nail out. Or to, just say again one final time. So let's start off with some scripture. Second Chronicles 15. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, and while ye be with him, and if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. But uh, when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And nation was destroyed of nation, and city of city, and God did vex them with all adversity. Be strong, be ye strong therefore. Let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. So it's just a, I've talked about it before, but it's a, it's a pet peeve of mine, just the, the easy believing Christians. And yeah, so that's one of the things I wanted to go over, <laughs> easy believing Christians. But before I do that, I wanted to go over the Bible version is, issue, because I've looked at a few people's videos over the last couple of days, and they all seem to, they're all, the people I've looked at, they do one of two things. One thing is they'll, they'll give this Bible version, and then but it says this in this Bible version. And if you're watching this channel, you know I'm a King James only person. You can't you can't have agreement amongst Christians if we're all we all have a different Bible version. Like we, we can't we can't sing the same song, so to speak, if we have different lyrics. We need we need the same words. We we need all the same words. We need to agree on the Bible version. And as we know, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Word of God does not change. And so only one version is the correct version. So which version is that version? Well, if the King James isn't that version, then the people who had the King James, you know, the most printed book in history, the people who had that book, that version, before all the modern versions came out, well, they, they're screwed, aren't they? Because they didn't have the proper Word of God. You know, because because there's only one word of God, because the word of God doesn't change. So, if it's not the King James version, then you know all those people, all those people before before the modern versions. What, what did they have then? So it's the King James. I've gone over this argument before. Um, yeah. And for what's it, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Now the Lord God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that you may be with one mind and with one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need, we need to all have the same, we need to be like, in order to be like-minded, we need the same reference material. And if you can't rely, it's the other thing, you can't, when you're going into, like this word means this and this word means that, and you start dissecting things, you really need to do that with every single word. Like, if you're going to say, oh, in the Greek, this word says this. If you're going to do that, then you need to do that with every single word. You need to be consistent with your methodology. 
But realistically, it's not going to happen. And we all need to be consistent. It, it, it just doesn't, it fractures up. Like one of the reasons we're so fractured is because we've all got the different, we've got different words. We're all following different things. It, it's silly. Um, yeah, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried away about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them, which have been occupied therein. Same t yesterday, today and forever, purified seven times. The King James is one version. One version of the Word of God is the Word of God. So I just wanted to go over that again. Another thing I wanted to say was that people need to read the whole Bible if you don't read the Old Testament, you're not going to understand the New Testament. I mean, if you just read the New Testament, which a lot of people seem to do, then what's the story? The story is some guy turns up and he starts performing miracles and stuff and then people think that he's the Son of God. Well, that's what the Antichrist is going to do. The Antichrist is going to turn up and start performing miracles and then a lot of people are going to worship the Antichrist. So you've got to read the Old Testament because if you don't have the context, you don't have the context for Jesus' life, if you don't understand the scripture that he was fulfilling when he came and the consistency of the history from the Old Testament times to the New Testament times, then you don't really know Jesus and you'll fall for the Antichrist because the New Testament is the end of the book. Jesus comes at the end. It's the last section. He's fulfilling the whole thing. You need to read especially the law. Everything, everything is based on the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law, the first five books. And it's something that I want to read more, but like I'm noticing the more I read, it, it's, you have to, you have to read the whole book. And that's a mistake that people, people make. And I'll just put a bit from Romans 16, 24 as well about, about, um, just the Bible versions thing. I won't talk about it much, but you know, just, just an example. You know, if we've got, if we're sharing Bible versions, we just say so we wanted to talk about Romans 16, 24, you know, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Well, if you got a different Bible version, you might not have that verse in your Bible version. So that's a problem. We need we need the same version. We need, we need to be talking about the same thing. And there's only one version. And if there's only one version, then it's the King James. And another thing, the name of God. There's a lot of people talking about the name of God. Now, what is the name of God? Well, we've decided it's the King James version that we're going off. Well, the name of God then is Jehovah. And I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty... But by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. And then in Psalm 83, uh, that men may know thou whose name alone is Jehovah. Thou art most high over all the earth. So Jehovah is the father's name. Now, is this the father's first name or ultimate preferred name or like the name, the name that we will be calling our father, our heavenly father into eternity probably not it's probably he's probably going to have a new name i think it says somewhere he's going to have a new name however if you want to refer to the father and you want to refer to him by name we're using the king james bible it's jehovah in the king james bible so just use that name and we're all, all agreeing that the king james bible is the, the word of god and it's he says his name is jehovah but we know that um the father jehovah has elevated his word above his names so that's why it says the lord he replaces his name with Lord most of the time. Jehovah, I think, is only in uh, the Bible four times or something. It's only a small number of times. Most of the time it's replaced because we're not calling on Jehovah. We're calling on Jesus because Jesus is our Savior. So at, at this point in time, our Lord is Jesus. And Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus is the Word of God. So we're calling on Jesus. So that's why we don't, we don't call on Jehovah. We don't call on Yahweh. Yahweh is not in the Bible. Jehovah is the name. And it's the same with Jesus. Like it's people saying Yeshua and Joshua and Yahusha and Yahushua. It's, it's Jesus. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. forever. And his kingdom, of his kingdom there shall be no end. Jesus, Jehovah and Jesus. Once again, is Jesus the name we're going to be calling him forevermore into the future? No, I don't think so. He's going to have a new name. I said that in Revelation. He'll have a new name. 
and we might be calling him by a different no, us, who, us who are saved and who are you know, the bride of Christ, we might be calling him by a different name than those who are still on the earth. Don't know, but at the moment, because we're using the King James, the name that has been given to us for our Lord is Jesus. And I think we should be using that so it's consistent. And also because it's the name that people recognize. It's weird that people want to use other names. It's weird to me. Like you, you have to explain who you're talking about if you use Yeshua or something. Not that that's not his name. I think that is his name as well. In, it's his name in Hebrew. However, we speak English and we're talking to people who speak English and we, who know the Lord as Jesus. And if you start saying Yeshua, it's just going to confuse people. And it's not, it's not the point. The point is not to be confused about a name. The point is to be of one mind. Of one mind. Let's just use the King James Bible, the Word of God. Let's just use the name that's given to us in the Word of God. And if Jesus, when we meet him, wants us to call him something different, then okay. But if we start using different, different names, it's just confusing the issue. And extra biblical books. The same thing with that. I've seen so many people and they... The biggest one is people who talk about the Nephilim. The Nephilim, like I realized, the Nephilim are in the Bible. They're called giants in the Bible. I, I realized that. I understand that. And I understand that there is a thing. There's the fallen angels and there's the, the offspring of the fallen angels and the uh, women. And just, you know, there's things going on with evil spirits and that type of thing and the offspring of evil spirits. And the bloodlines, all that, but I think it's really dangerous to go off, go off on the like Enoch. Enoch would be the main book. I, I think it's a really dangerous book, just because it's a distraction. And I think I think there's areas in it, and I don't trust Enoch personally. But it's it's just a distraction. And I think there's, there's things you need to keep in mind here, because people go off and they they start going off to some really weird territory. And so I'm just gonna read. Some things for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. We're here to preach the the cross, the gospel. Uh, it's you get like my ministry has been about not knowing and not understanding. As, as soon as you get away from the word of God, you don't know. There's so many complex things going on. If you're not basing your truth off the Word of God, and the Word of God is the King James Bible in English, and we speak English, if you're not basing it off that, then you might be wrong. There's so much we don't know. So we're not here to understand. We're not here to understand. We're here to be saved. We're here to preach the gospel and like to, to follow the commandments, I should say. We're here to follow the commandments and preach the gospel. That's what we're here to do. And can we not? it's hard because you, you need to explain the context as well, but just... Just a warning about going off and teaching other weird doctrines. You don't understand. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that may, we may do all the words of this law. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. There's things that we don't know and that we can't know. And if you go into Kabbalah and you go into the mystery religions and those teachings, if you go deeply into that, you can find out other truths as well because Satan is giving those truths away. Now, those, there are truths mixed truths mixed with lies. But yeah, if, if you want to know the secrets of this reality beyond what God is telling us, his people, you can find out some things by going to the fallen angels. But I don't recommend it. Just be okay with not knowing. Remember, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So, I just found this thing is a bit of a bit of a hodgepodge video. This one, so I found this verse in uh, this bit in Isaiah twenty six, which I thought was interesting. I thought it was sort of a rapture bit in Isaiah, like as a woman with child. As you don't know, remember Revelation twelve, like as a woman with child that draweth near to the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pangs. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. And wind is associated with spirit. Wind in multiple places associated with spirit. So we brought forth wind. It could be seen as we brought forth nothing. We brought forth just air. But in this context, I don't think that's what it means. It doesn't. It doesn't it seems to be implying. It says, I got a rapture vibe from this bit. So we've been, we have been with child. The nation of Israel... We've been in pain, we've been through tribulation, and now we've brought forth winds, we've brought forth spirit, you might say, but we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen, which is what happens at the rapture. We, the rapture does not deliver the earth, and 
the inhabitants of the world don't fall at the rapture. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my body they shall rise. And the body of Christ rises up, but they shall be no means, I can't remember the exact wording, by no means precede the, those which are dead or those which sleep. I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen. The dead are going to rise as well in the rapture, that those in Christ. Awake and sing. And we sing in the sky, sing the new song of Moses. Moses. Ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. So we'll go up, we'll shut our doors, and we'll wait till the indignation is passed. And there's also a bit in Deuteronomy about marriage, how um, saying, I think it's a year, I'll put it on the screen, I didn't turn up the scripture here. There's a, a year after you've been married where you don't have to go to war. I thought that was interesting. So we'll get married to Jesus, and I, I assume that means that there'll be at least one year where... Jesus is not going to war because he'll be with his wife and he'll, he'll be comforting his wife, which would be very nice, I imagine. So, yeah, hiding, shutting the doors, into, enter into our chambers and shut our doors for a little while till the indignation be overpassed. And I'm including myself in this, hoping to be raptured. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall also disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So that's after... That's, you know, that's the end bit. So I thought that was an interesting part in Isaiah 26. It seems to be talking about the end time there and the rapture. So a bit about these people wanting to not be corrected and calling me legalist. A lot of people call me legalistic. When, or seems to, be, seems to be the case, I should say. When I point out that it's not simply a matter of being saved and then, oh, done, cool, that's the end. That's all my obligations fulfilled. I've, I've, said, I've said, oh, Jesus, save me. Now, now I'm good. There we go, I'm, I'm all good. And I go pointing out to people, no, 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 you've got to follow the commandments, you've got to go. And then people saying, oh, legalistic, or, you know, don't judge me. So I just thought I'd read a few verses. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. That's, yeah. the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy, but to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up, that he may give uh, to him that is good before God. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is also vanity and vexation of spirit. Sorry, that was weird to read. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. It's okay to be reproved. I've had, I've had a frustrating day because there's been a few people online talking to me in irritating ways. And so I'm a little bit annoyed, but I have to check myself because... Okay, I guess I've been through a, a period where I've thought, well, I've got to speak up. I've got to speak up to some of the people I've been watching and tell them where I perceive that they've been going wrong. And it's been irritating to me, the responses. Like it's, I like arguing. So it's not that, it's not that they disagree with me because I like arguing. It's more just the dismissive or just the attitude that people have, I guess. They're not, not hearing counsel, not receiving instruction. And they're not willing to defend their position with scripture either. That's another thing. Is a the repentance and following the commandments. I've got written here. It's important to repent and it's important to follow the commandments because here's something that I have learned. Like I would say that I have recently overcome some things. Like I, I was drinking too much Coca Cola and I was having trouble with that. I, I kind of didn't want to stop. I was just like, like, you know, this isn't that bad. It's only drinking a, like a coke a day who cares really in the grand scheme of things but then it's like i knew i should probably stop drinking coke and i've overcome it and that's good and i'm like i feel like i'm i'm past the like i'm not craving it anymore and then like i was watching i was doing lots of research and things but then in between doing my research i was watch, watching internet videos and watching some some gaming stuff like do, still doing what i should be doing with the research but then watching other things as well and getting distracted. And I knew I probably should stop doing that. And now I have. I've managed to overcome that as well. And God rewards you when you do that. And so that's something I think that people don't get 
when you don't repent and when you don't follow the commandments and you just go on, you assume that you are saved, you don't get further, you don't get closer to God. Like he doesn't, he doesn't give you the knowledge until you do the work. So it's like, you know, do you need to work to be saved? No, but if you don't do the work, you won't move forward. You won't get the knowledge. It, the reward always comes after the work. God never rewards before. That's what Satan does. Satan will give you what you want before you pay for it. And then afterwards you pay for it. God is the opposite. With God, you work for it. And then after you've worked for it, then he will pay you. He will reward you. So that's the difference. one of the differences between God and Satan. So you need to repent of everything. Everything. Every single thing. There is nothing that you should not repent from. And follow the commandments. All of them. Follow, you should follow all of the commandments. And it's the one I struggle with is uh, the Sabbath which I do keep, but I keep it badly. <laughs> I keep it badly every week. Uh, it's something I need to work because I find it hard for my mind to stop. So that's what I need to work on. But I'm pretty much there, I think. Like, I mean, there's always things. There's, there's always, the closer you get, the harder it is. Cause you, the more finer detail you need to get. But like, um, repent and keep follow the commandments. Repent and follow the commandments. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? And down a bit. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoureth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he said, said us unto them, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, uh, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth, seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me, and reject, uh, receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. It's a weird bit, this bit, because it's God speaking through Jesus. So it sounds like Jesus speaking in some bits, but then it's, I think, like, I interpret this as God speaking. So the first bit there, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And then this next bit, I think, is God the Father talking. And if any man hear my words and believe not, Oh, sorry, this, so this is still Jesus. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. But then he's saying, he that rejecteth me, is in he that rejecteth the word of God, rejecteth not my words, because they're not his words, because they're the Father's words. The Father is giving Jesus his words, because the Father has given, <laughs> given us Jesus. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. Um, that's why he's saying, hath one that judge him. The word that I have spoken, that is the, the word that God has spoken, so that's God speaking there, is the way I interpret it. The word that I have spoken, the same will judge him in the last day. So it sounds like Jesus in one sense is saying, he's not going to judge him, it's the word that's going to judge him, but then he is the word. It's strange. For I have not spoken of myself, but of the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even if, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you, uh, <laughs> if ye have love one to another. So I struggle with this bit because I feel betrayed constantly. I try to love, but then, like the way I. The way I always have seen things is people are going in the wrong direction and they need to be corrected. But then it's like, who am I? 
who am I to correct? Like I, I struggle with the line as to what to say and who to say it to and how to say it. And I feel like I try to trust in people and yeah, I feel betrayed constantly by people. I, I try to trust and I assume I assume the best and I try to help people and then they like turn around and show that they're not saved and that they don't care or that they're aggressive or that whatever. And it's, I struggle with that, you know, loving each other. Like when I come across, I almost don't want to, when I find somebody now, like this, some people, I, I find them and I enjoy a video they've put out and I think, oh, this person seems like they're like God and like, I feel love towards them. And then it's like, I almost don't want to watch any more things that they've done because I might find out that they're actually way off. Because there are a lot of people who have nice words and they come across as warm and you watch one video or maybe a couple of videos and they come across as really good. But then you find out that they've got some horrible error to their doctrine and they're preaching the wrong thing and they're misleading people. And, and it's like, it just breaks my heart over and over again. So yeah. I struggle with that. And as we go on as well, people who like I've I've got information from in the past and then they've just in recent in recent times they've completely gone off and they've they've just gone weird. It it's hard. I, I'm really looking forward to the time when I don't have to have my guard up constantly and I can just trust what's in front of me. It's it's been I mean, I've gone down a weird path and I've looked at a lot of occult stuff and done the QAnon stuff and looked at Mystery Babylon. So I've kind of brought this on myself, or maybe it's just the role that I've had is looking at this stuff, but it makes me not trust because I've seen the way things get twisted. And um, I see how I see how error in doctrine creates problems down the line. And so I'm very, like on one sense, on one hand you could say I am judgmental because I can see what the end result is. Like to some people it might not seem like which Bible version you read is important, for example. But like I've worked through that issue quite a lot and I see how how big a problem it causes. Like it's it's a massive big deal. It might not seem like a big deal when you're first getting into it, but it is actually a really big deal. It's really important. Do you trust only the King James Bible? It's it's really important. Like it's it's super important. It's a critical thing. It's something that's worth fighting for. But people get angry at you. <laughs> and there there are other things like that as well. Like keeping the commandments. It's like a lot of people who get really angry and call you legalistic when you say they should be keeping the commandments. But it's really important. It's really important to keep the commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. He that have my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father... And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even if I have, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater hath no man uh, than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. And a bit from Acts, the former treatise I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For Tron, tr John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So Jesus commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, and the, uh, the apostles said, Don't be so legalistic, Jesus. You've died for us, therefore we don't need to follow your commandments. Oh, they didn't say that though, did they? Can you imagine? Can you imagine the modern Christian in that in that situation? I command you to do this. Jesus coming back. You know, command you should not depart from Jerusalem. Ah, oh, Jesus, we're not following your. We don't need to follow your commandments. Don't be so legalistic, Jesus. Ah, oh, Jesus, you gave us these commandments, but you died for us. You died for us, so we're we're all good. You've forgiven our sins. We don't need to follow your commandments. 
And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of his seed, which kept the keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So there's a, there's a good reason to not keep the commandments, because if you, if you keep the commandments, Satan's going to be angry at you. So you have the choice. You know, in Revelation 12, it's talking about, yeah, you have the choice. You can not keep the commandments, and then the dragon won't be angry with you. And you can also take the mark of the beast and burn in the lake of fire forever, if you want. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into this city. Hear ye, children, the instructions of a father, and intend, attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake not my law. For I was my father's son, tender, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee honour, when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take uh, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. And be confident in this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And there's some other things you can read which about losing. I'm not going to read. <laughs> um, I'm not going to read them, but you can lose your salvation, I think. And I'm not saying that you will, but... I think, like it's. I think I'd say it's healthy to have the uh, the opinion that if you completely screw up, but don't take it for granted. I guess that's the way. That's the way of saying it. It's a hard thing to say. I guess there's degrees of being saved. That's another way of might saying it. It's degrees of being saved. Do you want to be saved because you had to be, you know, passed completely through the fire and have most of you burnt off? You know, you're you've been saved, but all of your works have been burnt up. Burnt up, or do you want to be saved because you've you've built upon the rock which is Jesus Christ and now you've got you know, works that survive the fire you know do do the right thing don't take it for granted that you're going to be saved and therefore you don't need to do anything love Jesus Christ and keep his commandments I guess that's the way of saying it. if you love Jesus keep his commandments anyway I hope this blesses you may Jesus bless you and lead you to the truth Amen